comfort zones are something that all creatures on Earth have. The Google definition is a place or situation where one feels safe or at ease without stress. While the Google definition gives us a broad perspective, comfort zones are much more important than we think, being more than just a place or situation. They can be defined as a feeling, like happiness or enthusiasm, a familiar face, like a parent or a best friend, or even as a physical object that you can hold and take with you, like a pencil or a necklace. While we all have a different range of comfort zones, one thing stays constant. Leaving these zones always proves difficult. And the reason leaving your little zone is so uncomfortable is because you're losing something that you depend upon. Say you're taking a math test and you can't find your favorite pencil. How would that make you feel? Would you have a sudden sense of panic? Oh no, where's my pencil? Say you have an expensive ring that was a gift from your best friend and you lost it. How would that make you feel? Would you search for it everywhere? Oh dear, where's my ring? This kind of panic is what happens when you leave that little safe space or zone that you rely upon. These zones are critical to keeping us safe, in our eyes, and in a manageable mood. Leaving these zones not only causes extreme discomfort, but also causes miscommunications and misunderstandings between you and the people you love. Being forced to do something that you have no taste or feel for pushes you a bit too far out of your comfort zone, but also can cause preventable actions to occur. Becoming mad at your friends and family for something that you could have prevented is a really hard feeling to come to terms with. This is why it's so important to understand when and where you have a comfort zone and not to push yourself out of it. For example, this past winter, I was dragged unwillingly to a Salinas High football game and thought I was doing myself a huge favor by breaking out of a comfort zone and trying something fun and new. Wrong. The second I had to pay $10 for parking, I knew immediately something was wrong. I complained the entire way to the field, passing people that I didn't know and people that definitely didn't know me. Once I saw the amount of people in that little arena, I flipped out. I was pretty nasty the whole night. I was cold and I couldn't feel my toes and I did not want to be there. I made it worse for everyone in my group by going and I totally could have prevented it. I knew going that I would not have comfy, happy feelings being there, but I went anyways. The silver lining to this, however, is that I was able to say I had gone to a real football game in high school, despite facial expressions in pictures <laughs> looking pretty horrific. <laughs> pretty much what I'm trying to convey is that it's important to know your boundaries with comfort zones and when to push yourself out of them and when not to push yourself out of them. Connecting back to what I said earlier, comfort zones can also be items or places. Think about your house and how comfortable it is for you to come back to and unwind in. Your house is a space that you've made your own and somewhere I hope you feel safe in and able to relax in. That's a type of comfort zone. However, a home is a completely different type of comfort zone. A home can be a person, not just a physical space in which you inhabit. Most people's homes are their significant others, best friends, or moms. And these are the people that you know you're comfortable around and would stick to like glue in a situation that pushes you out of your comfort zone. My home is my best friend, Akira, who I stick to like a fly to one of those sweet sticky traps. For those of you that don't know Akira, she's a current junior here at York and one of the kindest and most calming people that I have ever met. When I feel out of sorts or uncomfortable or out of place in a situation that we're both in, I know I can rely on here to be a rock for me. I really wish she had been there for that football game because I know for a fact that I would have had a much better time. Akira is my home and friend form and a comfort person and zone for me to fall back on when I know I need that kind of support. Connecting back to what I said earlier, Comfort zones can also be items, such as stuffed animals, necklaces, or anything you may have formed some sort of emotional bond to. I have an emotional support necklace, and I'm wearing her right now. This thing goes everywhere with me. I never take her off unless I have a sports game, but even then, I'd still like to sneak her under my jersey. When I'm nervous or anxious, I rub the pendants on my necklace to create a distraction for myself. 
I've also become accustomed to doing this in public, and especially in doctor's offices. I hate the eye doctor so much, it's crazy. No offense, Dr. Nunzig. <laughs> but when I'm scared and anxious in the office, waiting for the imminent gust of wind that's going to be blown directly into my eyeball in around five minutes, rubbing the pendants on my necklace helps ground me and remind me that I'm safe and okay. These inanimate comfort zones are some of the most important comfort zones we'll have in our lives and help keep us safe in new places and dealing with new situations. A great way to define these comfort zones is by using Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yes, I know all of you Yorkies remember learning about Maslow's hierarchy of needs in sophomore English, but for those of you that haven't taken sophomore English at York, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a five-tier psychological theory that represents a model of human needs. Needs at the bottom of the pyramid need to be fulfilled before you can work your way up, and it's a model for understanding motivations of human behavior. Besides that, it's also a great way to see how impactful comfort zones are in our lives and how much they affect our behavior. At the bottom of the pyramid is physiological needs, such as air, water, food, shelter, clothing, and sleep. Moving up is safety needs, such as resources, personal security, health, and employment. The third tier is love and belonging, such as family, friendship, intimacy, and connection. Next is esteem, such as respecting not only others, but yourself, self-esteem, status, recognition, and freedom. And at the very top of the pyramid is self-actualization, the desire to become the best version of yourself. Now, where do comfort zones fall? In my opinion, they fall in all five levels. Physiological needs can be knowing you have safety and comfort in the amenities and spaces around you, and have all of those within your reach, helping you ascend to safety needs. These zones put you in your own little bubble, keeping you safe and comforted from everything else going, around, going on around you, helping you ascend to love and belonging. Having family and friends around you that feel like home to you and keep you comfortable bumps you up to esteem. Being comfortable in who you are and where you are in life helps you reach self-actualization, and then you're at the top of the pyramid, fully comfortable in the version of you that is the best that it can be. These zones help us reach the top of the pyramid and help us become the best versions of ourselves that we can be. These zones are vital to us, and I can't imagine living without them. They keep us safe, happy, and able to self-actualize it's important for us to grow out of them and expand them and break them. But just having them here for us is the best thing we can do to keeping ourselves safe and happy. Thank you.